Now, what actually is capital gearing ratio? We have to discuss this thing. You know, till now, what we have done, we have discussed about equity ratio, right? Also, we have discussed about debt to equity ratio, right? Then we have discussed about uh, debt to equity. Then we have discussed about debt to total asset ratio, right? We have discussed about debt to total asset ratio in equity ratio. You know, we have seen that we try to find out the proportion of equity, right? That how much equity shareholders they have invested into the business in debt to equity ratio. You know, we have seen that what is the proportion of that and equity into the business and in debt to total asset ratio, what we have done, we have checked that what proportion of asset belongs to uh, lenders, right? That is what a debt to total asset uh, turnover ratio talks about, right? Now, new ratio, which we have to uh, check here, that is capital gearing ratio right in capital gearing ratio you know what we try to find out we try to find out ki company ke paas na kitna fixed interest ya fir fixed payment securities hai, right what is the meaning of fixed interest or fixed payment securities right now here if i talk about if you have uh, issued debentures right let's suppose what you have done you have issued debentures hana? you have issued debentures or let's suppose you have issued preference shares right what do you have done? You have issued preference shares, right? Or there could be some other securities to whom, what do you have to do? You have to make fixed payment, right? Let's suppose you have issued bonds, right? You have issued bonds here, right? So these are fixed payment securities, right? To debenture, what you will be doing, you will be paying fixed interest, right? 10%, 12%, whatever interest rate you have decided, you have to pay this much interest, right? To preference shareholders, what do you have to do? You have to pay fixed dividend, right? Dividend is going to be fixed to bonds. What do you have to do? You have to pay fixed interest. Right? To bonds, what do you have to do? You have to pay fixed interest. But if I talk about equity shareholders, do you do you do you feel that we have to give them fixed uh, dividend? Equity shareholders ko kya fixed dividend diya jata hai? Nee. If company is making loss, no dividend is to be given. If even though company is making profit, if director wants, then uh, company will be giving the dividend. Right? If director do want to do not want to declare the dividend, so what directors can do, they can retain the money. Right? Now here in capital gearing ratio, if you see what we will be doing, we will be comparing the fixed payment securities with equity shareholders point, right? What we will be doing, we will be comparing the fixed payment securities with equity shareholders point, right? So here you will uh, come to know about that. What is the proportion of fixed payment securities as compared to equity shareholder, right? Equity shareholder fund. So if you read the definition, you will be getting the more idea. In addition to debt to equity ratio, sometimes capital gearing ratio is calculated to show the proportion of fixed interest bearing capital to funds belonging to equity shareholder, right? In debt to equity ratio, <clears throat> right? What was the formula of debt to equity ratio? We have discussed about debt to equity ratio. And we will try to understand the difference between debt to equity ratio and capital gearing ratio. What was the formula of debt to equity ratio? Do you remember the formula? <clears throat> what was the formula? Debt to divided by total equity or equity shareholder fund. Right, total equity or equity shareholder fund, both the uh, things are same. Right, here, what is going to be the formula? Here, you know, formula is same. Right, there is one small change. There is one small change. Now, what's that small change? In case of debt to equity ratio, you know, we have assumed that preference share is a part of equity shareholder fund. Right, we have assumed that preference share is a part of equity shareholder fund. Right. Preference share is a part of equity shareholder fund. Now, if I elaborate this formula, so what formula we will be getting here? Here we have seen the formula that is total outside liability, right? Total outside liability divided by equity shareholder fund, right? Now, what equity shareholder fund will be including here? It will be including equity share capital plus reserve and surplus, right? Also, it will be including preference share capital. Right, we will keep preference share capital in denominator, right? In case of debt to equity ratio, right? In case of debt to equity ratio, preference share capital is similar to equity share capital, right? We are assuming that preference share capital is a part of uh, equity share capital because you know it is not a co debt, right? Because to preference shareholder, what what we do, we pay uh, dividend, right? So we are not assuming it as a co debt, right? But preference shareholders ko fixed amount hum log pay karte hain, right? So capital gearing ratio mein formula kya derive ho gaya pe? If I write down the formula for capital gearing ratio, here formula is going to be fixed interest bearing securities 
फिक्स इंटरेस्ट बियरिंग सिक्योरिटीज डिवाइडेड बाय इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर फंड राइट इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर फंड राइट इट इज इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर फंड राइट नाउ हेयर यू नो इन इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर फंड वी वोट बी इंक्लूडिंग प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल इन इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर फंड वी वोट बी इंक्लूडिंग प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल नाउ हाउ दिस फॉर्मुला विल वर्क आई विल शो यू द कैलकुलेशन हेयर If I elaborate this formula, so in fixed interest bearing securities, we will be including debentures, right? We will be including loan if you have borrowed any kind of loan. And now here, you know what you will be doing? You will be including preference share capital in numerator, right? What you will be doing? You will be including preference share capital in numerator, right? In denominator, what you will be doing? You will be taking equity share capital plus reserve and surplus, right? Here you will be taking only equity share capital and reserve and surplus right so you can see the difference between these two formulas right hopefully you understood the difference between these two formulas right so this formula is for debt to equity ratio right and this first formula is for calculation of capital gearing ratio right like, so here what we have done we have taken preference share capital in denominator and in capital gearing ratio what we are doing we are taking preference share capital in numerator to so, capital gearing ratio na aapko kya idea deta hai कि फिक्स्ड फिक्स इंटरेस्ट और फिक्स पेमेंट सिक्योरिटीज कौन सी है राइट right? जिनको हम लोग फिक्स पेमेंट करते हैं सो इंटरेस्ट डिविडेंड और ये जो सिक्योरिटीज uh, है जिनको इंटरेस्ट और डिविडेंड रिसीव होगा वो फिक्स पेमेंट सिक्योरिटीज है राइट सो हेयर व्हाट वी आर डूइंग वी आर कंपेयरिंग फिक्स पेमेंट सिक्योरिटीज विद इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर फंड राइट दैट इज व्हाट कैपिटल गियरिंग रेशियो टॉक्स अबाउट राइट नाउ इफ यू सी द फार्मूला हियर आई हैव ऑलरेडी गिवन द फार्मूला सो द फार्मूला फॉर कैपिटल गियरिंग रेशियो इज प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल प्लस डिबेंचर्स प्लस अदर बोरोन फंड्स डिवाइडेड बाय इक्विटी शेयर कैपिटल प्लस रिजर्व एंड सरप्लसेस राइट हियर देयर इज ओनली चेंज ऑफ प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल इज इट क्लियर टू ऑल नाउ हियर इफ यू सी क्वेश्चन इज गिवन I am giving you one minute time. Solve question number one. You are required to calculate capital gearing ratio from the following uh, information. Share capital is given in the question. Preference share capital is given. The venture is given. Then loan from bank and reserves uh, is given in the question. Right. What we have to do first? We have to find out fixed payment securities. So fixed payment securities uh, will include here preference shares. right it will include uh, debentures right then it will include uh, loan from bank right and after that what i have to do i have to calculate equity shareholder fund it includes uh, equity share capital plus reserves right it includes equity share capital plus reserves so if i do the total of fixed payment securities so it will include preference shares debentures and loan from bank right and equity shareholder fund include 9 lakh plus reserves that is 4 lakh so here if i calculate the ratio so what is going to be the ratio ratio is 19 lakh divided by 13 lakh right so it shows that your fixed payment securities are 1.46 times than your equity shareholder fund right it is more than equity shareholder fund right now what analysis you can do uh, from this that company is more dependent upon that right outsiders fund you can say company is more dependent on outsiders fund right company is more dependent on outsiders fund are you able to understand hopefully you understood this concept right uh, if you see the second question here second question is very similar to the previous question but here i have changed some data right we will read this question you are required to uh, calculate capital gearing ratio from the following information Equity share capital is given nine lakh. Preference share is given five lakh. Ten percent debenture is given two lakh. Right? Then loan whose maturity is of eight months. Right? And here another loan whose maturity is of three years. Right? And reserve is given. And here reserve is given. Right? Now, what we should include here? If you see the formula, what formula says? Ah, uh, preference share capital, debentures plus other borrowed funds. So. Should we include loan with maturity of eight months? It is short term loan. Should we include a loan uh, with maturity of short term? Uh, with with which consists of uh, short term duration? Should we include uh, this loan? Here, you know, you can calculate two types, uh, two two formulas, right? You can calculate two answers, right? Where you can include a uh, loan with short term maturity, 
and where you can exclude loan with short term maturity right in formula it is not clearly given whether you should include short term loans or not right because you know even though if you are borrowing short term loans what you have to do you have to pay interest but usually you know what we should do we should ignore loan with short term maturity right we, we should ignore loan with short term maturity hai na but but you know what is the difference between a uh, short term loan and uh, working capital loan do you know the difference between short term loan or overdraft facility overdraft facility is a recurring loan what is overdraft according to you what is overdraft according to you when you borrow you know loans for your working capital management right what is working capital loan when you borrow loan for working capital uh, management right now working capital you will be requiring uh, for uh, you can say for lifetime right if you are running any business so regularly you will be requiring the working capital right and if i take the practical case here so most of the businesses what they do they borrow working capital loan or overdraft facility right and once you borrow working capital loan or overdraft facility right so it continues till you are continuing your business right why it continues what is the uh, uh, process of working capital loan and maine aaj agar working capital loan liya hai right so usme maturity rehta hai ki 3 months mein aapko pay karna hai right let's suppose here if i take a simple example let's suppose my turnover is of my turnover of business is of 100 crore rupees right now there is a condition uh in banking that if my turnover is 100 crore so i can get overdraft facility or working capital loan of 20% of turnover right maximum i can uh, withdraw from the bank for uh, working capital that is 20% of your turnover right so i can get overdraft facility of 20 crore rupees right practically you will be getting 20% facility right you will be getting 20% overdraft facility right jitna mera turnover hai na uska 20% mujhe automatically kya hota hai overdraft facility mein bank se withdraw kar sakta hu right ab maine kya kiya na 20 crore mere paas overdraft facility hai right in first quarter what i have done in first quarter i have withdrawn let's suppose i have used 10 crore rupees overdraft facility right so what i have to do in second quarter i have to make the payment of 10 crore rupees right i will be paying the interest on it right usually 9 to 10% interest is levied on working capital loan or overdraft facility so there will be a maturity uh, on any loan right so what i have to do i have to pay 10 crore rupees hai na what i have to do i have to pay 10 crore rupees in next quarter is it clear i have to pay 10 crore rupees in next quarter right so i will pay the next uh, 10 crore rupees in next quarter and again what i can do i can withdraw 20 crore rupees from bank hai na so every quarter i will borrow something and i will repay something every quarter and there will be fixed interest payment that is what a working capital or short term loan so usually if you are borrowing a uh, working capital loan or if you got overdraft facility from bank then you should include that short term loan or working capital loan for the calculation of capital gearing ratio right and if it is a core short term loan jahan pe aapka fixed maturity period hai aaj maine mein aap repay karke fir loan nahi borrow karoge us case mein aap ignore karna chahiye right so what i am assuming this is working capital loan right if it is a working capital loan so definitely it will be included for calculation of capital gearing ratio so here what i will do i will copy this data right and here what i will do i will include loan with short term maturity right here i will include loan with short term maturity Right, and I will close the bracket here. And if I do the total, so what is going to be the total of fixed payment security, preference shares, debentures, four lakh and six lakh. Right, so it is seventeen lakh now. Hana. Now, what is going to be the total of equity shareholder fund? It is going to be nine lakh and three lakh. So here, what is going to be the ratio? Seventeen lakh divided by twelve lakh. it is going to be 1.41 times and if i am excluding right if i am excluding loan for short term uh, loan with short term maturity so what is going to be the answer here that i am copying this data here if i am excluding this thing so here i will take only preference share capital debentures and loan with long term maturity so here i will be taking 13 lakh and this amount is going to be same that is 9 lakh plus 3 lakh so here ratio is going to be 1. 0.083 times